Hey everyone, and welcome back to Mike Fish for a care guide on Serpa Tetris. I would first like to thank every one of my viewers as I am noticing a lot of traffic on my channel as of late, so please keep liking and commenting. I would also like to thank you all for getting me to 700 subscribers this past week. Seems like just yesterday we were on our journey to reach 100. Without further ado, this is a care guide for keeping Serpa Tetras, scientifically known as Hyphesa Brycon Equess. They also have other common names such as the Blood Kerosene, Callistus Tetra, Red Minor Tetra, Red Serpate, and Serpa Tetra. This video will cover everything from basic care, to diet, to breeding. The information will also be provided in the description. Serpa Tetras come from the Amazon Basin in South America, in countries Argentina, Brazil, Peru, Paraguay, and Bolivia. They are found in the Guapor and Paraguay rivers as well. Serpa tetras are flame-colored, bright red, and have black fins on their flat and tall body. They have a black comma-shaped spot just behind the gills. The dorsal fin is mostly black, but it is also edged with a bit of white. The anal fin is edged in black with a tad of white at the tip. These colors tend to fade with age, more specifically the black spot behind the gills. Through generations of selective breeding, there is now a long fin variety available. Serpa tetras are also very similar to red phantom tetras, Hyphesa brycon swiggles. Serpa tetras are relatively, fairly easy to care for. First off, they are a schooling species and should be kept in groups of at least six. The larger the group, the more confident and comfortable they are. They are considered to be a peaceful fish, however, they are quite a pain when keeping other tank mates. These serpe tetros are one of the worst fin-nipping species of fish I have ever seen. They say keeping an even larger group of them in a tank can minimize aggression, but it didn't help when I had them. So, maybe we can consider them as mildly aggressive. Serpa tetras can reach a maximum length of 1.75 inches or 4.5 centimeters. They have a life expectancy of 5 to 7 years and can even exceed that with optimum care. Serpa tetras like to hang out in the middle portion of the aquarium water column and like to congregate around tree roots and thick vegetation in the wild. For my aquariums, I like to replicate the natural habitat of whatever species I am keeping, but I also don't chase certain pH parameters. The aquarium I would keep for serpa tetras would have to be at least a 20 gallon long, which is about a length of 30 inches. You could fit a nice group of 10 to 15 in there. The temperature should be between 72 and 79 degrees Fahrenheit, or 22 to 26 degrees Celsius with a PA between 5 and 7.8 and a water hardness of 5 to 25 degrees general hardness. They come from still and slow-moving backwaters, lakes, ponds, and streams with subdued lighting. Therefore, I would replicate that with a smaller pump, surface plants, and maybe a light dimmer. I would also include a darker substrate, rocks, driftwood, plants with some open space for them to swim. As mentioned before, serpa tetras do best in larger groups of at least six, Personally, I would just keep them in a species-only tank as they can be quite the pain for slow-moving fish, as well as those that have long, colorful fins such as bettas and angelfish. I also had one that took a nice chunk out of the caudal fin of my Oscar that never regrew. From that point on, I told myself I am never going to own this species again. They are truly one of the worst fin-nipping tetras I have ever kept. On to the diet of these fish. They are not picky eaters at all and will accept pretty much all foods at the fish shop. They are considered omnivores and should be given a variety of different foods to encourage optimum health and coloration. In the wild, they eat small live foods such as insects, invertebrates, worms, and sometimes even plant matter. In the aquarium, flakes work well, pellets, freeze-dried foods of all sorts, bloodworms, frozen foods, daphnia, and more. Male and female serpi tetras look very similar to each other. There are only subtle differences which can become more apparent when the fish are ready to spawn. Males are generally slimmer and brighter in color with the dorsal fin being almost completely black. Therefore, females are plumper and paler in color. Breeding serpa tetras can be relatively easy. You can do it as a pair or have a group of them with equal number of males and females. The breeding tank should be dim lit with a dark substrate containing spawning mops or fine-leaf plants. Ideally, the water should be soft, 
6 to 8 degrees general hardness, with a pH of 6, with gentle flow and filtration, such as that of a sponge filter, and a temperature of 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius. You can condition the fish to spawn with live foods, and eventually the male will chase the female around to stimulate spawning. Females will scatter their eggs all over the plants or mops, and the male will fertilize them as they are laid. Hundreds of eggs can be produced in just one spawn. Once the eggs are fertilized, it is best to remove the parents as they will start consuming the eggs and turn off all the lights as the eggs are highly sensitive to light. The eggs will hatch after two days and the fry will feed off their yolk sac for a few more days. Once the yolk sac is fully absorbed and the fry are free swimming, they can then be fed fry foods such as infusoria, baby brine shrimp, and finely crushed flake foods. This concludes my care guide video for Serpa tetras. I hope you can take away at least one piece of information that convinced you to either purchase these beautiful fish or maybe skip them and go for a more peaceful species. They are affordable, easy to care for, and can really give your planted tank a nice bright red color. The only downside, once again, they can really stress out other tank mates and they will most definitely nip at their fins. Please let me know if you enjoyed this style of video in the comments. If so, I can maybe go back and remake all my other care guide videos with narration as well. If you prefer what I usually do, and that is just video clips with music and subtitles, I can continue to do that. I could also just do both. Please like and subscribe, as the likes have a major influence on the video's algorithm. Thanks for watching and we will see each other in the next video.